In this episode, two fast food companies are coming together for the most important meal of the day. We share some good food hacks with this partnership. And on the flip side, you guys won't believe how un-Pennsylvanian Mike is for never having pierogies before, while also discussing how awkward it is bringing it up that you have a podcast, and we also give you some tips on how to make sure you're staying hydrated and healthy at work. Mike, hit the music. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live, coming to you virtually in the form of Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube, it's time, presenting the Funny Business Podcast. On the left side, we have Matt. And on the right side, we have Mike. And welcome back to the Funny Business Podcast. We are ready to rock and roll. The energy is high. We are not coming to you live from WrestleMania. Um, that dream was squashed. But we're here. We're back for yet another episode. Uh, my voice really hurts from doing that, so I apologize, Mike, if I lose my voice later on. Hope you're all doing great. Um, Mike, how are you? How are things? I feel alive and well, Mr. Matthew. We are hopping into, let's just say, a new generation, a new evolution. That is the Funny Business Podcast. A new and era. A new era. Uh, no, we're not waiting to make... A bunch of albums and then wait for a tour to come out so we have all these tours all these songs that we could do in three and a half hours um but i'm great I'm, I'm great ready to do another episode with my best friend yeah i uh i can't complain i, I really get the vibes seem high today i'm very excited for today's episode yeah i don't really have any updates on anything okay um we'll get into the weekend stuff a little bit later um yeah, I, I think we're just ready to rock right in. All right. Well, Matt, I told you last night to be prepared because two fast foods are coming together in a partnership. And Matt, I don't know if you scoured the internet or you searched anything, mm. but can you take a wild guess as far as what this partnership uh, is happening between these two fast food places? Can you guess the fast food places? I So there was a big one that was announced. That if it's what I'm thinking of, I'm going to take a shot here. Go for it. It is... McDonald's and Krispy Kreme. Matt? Yes. I'm sorry. You are correct. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> what do I win? Um, I, I don't know. We we're we're in a new uh platform here, so I, I will give you uh I'll give you a golf clap. How about that? Okay, nice. Give it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so McDonald's and Krispy Kreme are expanding a partnership to a national level. So, Matt, have you ever had McDonald's breakfast before? Um, so their coffee's very good. I don't know if you've ever had their coffee. Coffee slaps. I've had like a hash brown, but like a, a McGriddle. I've never had a or like a sausage sausage McMuffin. Never had. Okay. It. Yeah. Uh the big uh I was going to say the big slap, the big puck of uh hash brown is probably something that you as a child would experience and have the best breakfast ever i'm i'm very tempted matt to maybe participate in that again in the near future who knows who cares it's 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 lovely um i see like sometimes people do like the pancakes like the whole like platter that mcdonald's comes out you ever see that before I have people also call them hotcakes, and I don't understand hotcakes. that. Yeah, mm. so I I don't know that that doesn't look as appetizing, but like apparently the hash brown to me looks absolutely appetizing. <laughs> but your hash browns are phenomenal; <laughs> they are. Yeah. So McDonald's and Krispy Kreme again teaming up for a national expansion, bringing Krispy Kreme donuts to McDonald's restaurants across the country. 
Um, so this is a phased rollout. So this is not going to happen by tomorrow. Uh, but later in 2024, it will begin. And the nationwide availability is expected by the end of 2026. So you have to hold on to your pants. You're going to have to hold on to your drive through cups because this is not happening until 2026. So you may ask yourself, well, what's going to be at McDonald's now with this Krispy Kreme offering? Great question. You're going to have three of the most popular donuts, the original glazed, chocolate iced with sprinkles, and then the chocolate iced cream filled donuts. So Matt, thoughts on that selection? Have you had them before? I will put hand up. I've only had the original glazed. Um so I believe I've also only had the original glazed. I've never I've never been to a Krispy Kreme. I only really get them through like fundraisers. Um I I may have had a cream filled one. I don't remember. Uh they're very good donuts. I mean they're mm-hmm. they're very good. Um yeah, I think I think everybody's pretty excited for this, I would have to say. I, you know, to be honest, this may prompt me to go to a McDonald's for a Krispy Kreme donut. And I, I think that's what brings the conversation into play is what benefit does that have? And Matt, you mentioned Krispy Kreme, you only get them at a fundraiser. There's not that many available locations, at least within our scope of our area, that yeah. we can get a Krispy Kreme donut. Yeah, I can't think of any. Like, I, I don't think in, I, I've lived in this area like my whole life. I've never known of a Krispy Kreme location near us. <laughs> there, there was one at college, and I think the commute time was about forty minutes. It's news to me. I had no it, idea. <laughs> it's actually close to Trent's college, believe it or not. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Personally. I've only had a cold brew from McDonald's. I've only had the opportunity to have one cold brew. That was when I was commuting an hour to work and uh, something happened. I think my cold brew messed up or something. I I forget what. And it ended up being that I was like, well, I said, I'm not going to go to Dunkin'. I said, I'm just going to get a quick hit of of McDonald's and uh, a cold brew. I forget which specific cold brew, but a cold brew was it. And wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, I think they probably are better versed within their hot coffee. But yeah. Uh, but Matt, you may ask yourself, is Pennsylvania going to be a state in which this is going to be tested out? I am asking um, myself and you that question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is uh, actually, sorry, I will, I will backtrack here. The partnership Why this became successful was that 160 restaurants in Kentucky underwent this test. Ooh, interesting. I'm also very curious because for something as, let's just say, popular as Krispy Kreme, I wonder why this was kept under wraps. Uh, Well, I think it's, it's, I mean, it's already taken like, the the news cycle by storm like everybody was talking about this when it was announced Hmm. um and it makes it actually kind of makes sense for them to keep it under wraps like this just because if it wouldn't end up happening everyone everyone would have been furious it Mm -hmm. also kind of makes sense for them to use kentucky because if they do this in new york again news stations are going to pick it up media coverage is going to be through the roof and if it doesn't end up happening they're going to get a lot of shit for it Hmm. so in terms of the big wigs uh tariq hassan McDonald's USA's chief marketing and customer experience officer uh, sees this partnership as an opportunity to expand business opportunities in the breakfast category. Then followed by Krispy Kreme president and CEO Josh Charlesworth highlights the partnership as a way to fulfill customers' requests for Krispy Kreme availability nationwide. And Mm -hmm. as we have discussed, I'm pretty sure that is the reason why this partnership was established. But I'm Going to admit that some people, and I do not have a verified source because of this, they don't seem too comfortable with this partnership. Why not? I think they are under the impression that Krispy Kreme donuts are available all day and that somebody's going to buy a double quarter pounder with cheese and then think to myself, you know what? 
I just ate a double quarter pounder of cheese. You know what's going to go great as a dessert? A Krispy Kreme donut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what I would, I'm going to contradict myself in a little bit. However, what I would say to those people is maybe try some lettuce. I mean, I don't, I really don't think you should be washing down your Big Mac with a glazed donut. Probably not the best case scenario. Um, but what I would counterpoint to that is, and this is maybe a general idea I just had. Why, why should we stop at breakfast? I think in terms of like production. So I mentioned this a few weeks ago. I watched The Founder, um, which is about McDonald's franchising and kind of how um, Ray Kroc uh, kind of destroyed the, the McDonald's brothers dream in terms of their, you know, their popularity with one single restaurant. Um, I think in terms of their production line, I think that's what causes a rift for uh, having breakfast all day. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question I have is, are they making them in, in store or are they getting them delivered from Krispy Kremes? As I saw the packaging, I am assuming that it is a packaged uh, delivery. So like Krispy Kreme is yeah. probably going to go to all these McDonald's or the distribution of a Krispy Kreme donut will go to these McDonald's mm -hmm. and they will obviously be delivered. And then that's what you will get. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, so I think it's, it's smart before I give my, my genius ideas. Cause you, okay. you know, I have some, I know you do. Yes. Um, I think it makes sense for both places. Obviously we said Krispy Kreme gets more exposure. McDonald's breakfast is gonna be through the roof when this happens and their, their drive throughs is going to be busy all day long. So let's get to these genius ideas. Yes, getting a donut for breakfast is great. But, you know, when we talk about this collaboration, there's endless opportunities. Mike, can you imagine a Big Mac, but instead of a bun, it's a glazed donut? I mean, that you have to you have to make that like a limited time thing. Like, do it for a week. People are absolutely going to try that. I would not be surprised if that was a McDonald's hack. Yes. Is absolutely. buying a donut. Buying a Big Mac, take the buns off the Big Mac, and then you got your two Krispy Kreme donuts in between. Yeah, absolutely. And if it's just breakfast, like do it with a breakfast sandwich, mm -hmm. like glazed donut on the bottom, egg, sausage, cheese, bacon, Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> that's <laughs> now, that's insane. Now sliced in half donut, or are we going two full donuts? I think you know what they should do. They should make it like a New York deli style and put it in like tin foil, and then you cut it up, and then the video you just open it, and it's just I almost cursed. It's so it's just grease. O M G. Yeah. <laughs> Can't forget the Bev. Never, never, never. never, never. never. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. Oh man, the possibilities are endless. I also had another genius idea. Go for it. So obviously we're just thinking of sandwiches, but yeah. how can you include Krispy Kreme? With something else, like McNuggets. You know how you do that? Oh. You know where I'm going? Uh -huh. <laughs> Glazed dipping sauce. <laughs> you just dunk the fry. Maybe not with chicken McNuggets, <laughs> but like the fries. Mm. Just taking a, taking your fries, dipping it in that glaze. But what about glazed chicken nuggets? Glazed chicken nuggets is a good one, too. Like the saucy nuggets. I think they're... Uh, their buffalo, their spicy McNuggets are back right now for a limited time. Are they? Yeah, they're fire. Ooh. Wow. Um, yeah, glazed McNuggets would be great. Um, you probably stay away from it with the filet of fish. A little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but endless opportunities. Endless. <laughs> I Another genius one. Yeah. Krispy Kreme. Glazed Krispy Kreme McFlurry. Oh. Oh, now, with. Okay. I know we talked to little donut pieces in it. We talked about the ice spice drink and people weren't too happy with the ice spice drink from Duncan. But I think the best part is, is that the ice cream machines <laughs> will not work at some of these locations. So they'll, they can have this as this like big, like flashy advertisement. And then like they can't do it because the ice cream machines broke. They should actually double down on this partnership and be like, with all of the proceeds we get from Krispy Kreme donuts, it's going to go directly to new ice cream machines so that they never break. <laughs> That's how it should be. Or they make they, they go to like the Krispy Kreme McDonald fund. That's nationwide that whenever it does break down, chains can go to that fund, get the money, bring it back to them to fix the ice cream machine. 
So we're not going to do the Ronald McDonald fun. We're going to do. We're going to give the back crispy, to the, the, the ice cream the, machine. The, <laughs> the McCream fun. Oh, God. But it's no, that's great because it's the ice cream fund, the McCream fund for the mm-hmm. ice cream machines. Yeah. Is it going to go to any other other pies? Maybe two. Uh No. Okay. That's the ice cream fund. It's not going to be a. Mc- it's called the McCream fund. It, it's not going to be a McCream. Blueberry pie. No, no, just <laughs> specifically ice cream. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a safe. That's a safe choice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i, I don't if it, or this another genius idea instead of putting like a donut creamed like cream and the donut yeah even if you can't use crispy cream at night you know how you make it cream filled is you put a cheese filled burger like a stuffed burger with cheese in it i don't know about that one why not i don't know what What's the difference between having the cheese on top and cheese in the middle? I guess it's kind of like an ins- an inside out burger if that if that is the proper terminology. Like the burger um, like with the cream filled donut, like you kind of have like a burger filled donut. You got like cheese in it too and it's kind of like you have the bun on the outside that wraps it around, but like it's a donut. I guess. But I think people would enjoy that. It's like a it's like a lava burger with cheese. Lava burger with cheese. <laughs> That'd be genius. We're just throwing out. We're just handing hundos to the yeah, McDonald's really Corporation. Are. God, we better get royalties from this. <laughs> um, so to celebrate the partnership, uh, Krispy Kreme is offering a free original glazed donut to all guests visiting U.S. Krispy Kreme shops between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. at the release of this partnership press release which unfortunately has been passed to but uh yeah i mean this is this is 100 real it's coming straight from the Krispy cream website and i really hope for the best because you never know this could expand other possible partnerships that mm-hmm. we necessarily talk about all the time but we can't get access to and then it's like okay like how do we make this happen and who knows maybe it might work out yeah, it's also – it's great for on McDonald's part. Like everybody just went at Wendy's for their like fluctuating price thing. Yep. And then McDonald's comes out. We're getting Krispy Kreme. That's genius. My only concern is what is that cost going to be for a donut? It can't <sighs> be great. I mean I think we need to do some quick research here. We need to find out the cost of a Krispy yeah, for Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Also, shout out Krispy Kreme. You mentioned their promotion they're doing. They always have promotions of like giving away free donuts. They're very, very good at that, which I think more places need to be. Um, you know, they need to be aware of like just giving away like a free small something to give them that taste and be like, oh, this is really good. Let me go back the next time I'm hungry for that. I'm checking on the Krispy Kreme official website here if it loads. Which I don't know why. Okay, this works now. Uh, donuts. Lovely. I'm gonna take a guess that. Oh, he's just going for a, a dozen, or can I guess for a, the price of a single donut? You can guess. Can oh, I, guess I have the to. Price of a single donut. I have to order pickup. Hang on. We gotta, okay, we yeah, gotta go do. through the process. I'm gonna take a guess <laughs> that a single glazed donut is two fifty. Two fifty for a single glazed single donut. Single glazed donut, and I've never really looked into. I've bought donuts at Dunkin'. Don't know what the prices are. Okay, so a single original glazed donut. So this does not include any taxes, any fees. Correct. You said two fifty. Two fifty. A buck ninety nine. Wow. Okay. All right. Now, this is from. Where was the location that I picked? Because I was just clicking through. This is from North Wales, PA, which I did not know existed. Uh, I have heard of North Wales, PA. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, that's. I'm curious to see what they put the price at because I, th- I think they could put it at like three dollars and people would do it. I, for, I, like we've discussed, like for the amount of locations that we have seen a Krispy Kreme, I mean, I, I would, I would pay for that. Yeah, once in a while. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's really exciting. It makes you wonder, like, what other, like you said, what other partnerships are available like this. 
I have a thought. Yeah, lay it on me. Pancheros. I've never had Pancheros. So they have this patent or this style that they trademarked where they actually mix the inside of your burrito. I've mentioned this many times on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Expand the partnerships to Chipotle and Moe's Mm. for that mixing trademark to be expanded. Mm -hmm. A mixed up burrito. That sounds great. Yeah. They are like yeah. literally they have these shovels that like you see them work in um mm-hmm. that. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. Um I feel like Taco Bell is gonna be next to do something like this. Where do you think is the best uh Well, I don't know because they already do like the Cinnabon Delight things. I don't know if that's actually with Cinnabon or that's a cinnamon delights. Have you ever had uh, you probably haven't I had some. Wow. Gas. The Cinnabons? Yeah, at Dunk at Taco Bell. Absolute gas. <laughs> uh, but I could see them getting like the ice cream realm. They've talked about doing like a Baja Blast Freeze. Or I think they have something like that. Or like a gelato. I think they're actually coming out with like a Baja Blast gelato. Like a frozen drink? No, it's it's like they they tested it out at locations. It's, it's gelato Baja Blast flavor. Mm. So they could partner with like Cold Stone. Oh, Cold Stone's Ooh. so underrated, by the way. Like a Cold Stone taquito. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Like, wait, Cold Stone is just it, the mix. They don't actually roll the ice cream. I'm thinking like no, a roll. You're thinking rolled ice cream. That could rolled be ice cream taquito. That could work too. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, all great opportunities. Also, thank God this Krispy Kreme McDonald's thing was not an April Fool's joke. That would have sucked. There was a lot of bad April Fool's jokes. Yeah. A lot of... I think everybody's just, like... They're used to it now. Yeah. And, like, this, the companies... It's the same companies that do it over and over again. It's just, like... Okay, I think we've I think we've passed April Fool's. I don't think April Fool's is funny anymore. I'm going to say it. There has... There was some companies out there that did take advantage of it and were able to, like, do ridiculous sales to get an uptick in their, like, I, I know, like, I think Yankees, the New York Yankees, like, had, like, an April Fool's Day sale. And I'm not sure, but I don't quote me on this. I think, like, something was rated four bucks for a ticket. I, that's good I marketing on that part. I, yeah, it, it truly is, yeah. But, yeah, good luck to Krispy Kreme and McDonald's. Um, we're very well-versed in testing out donuts on this podcast so who knows maybe we'll do another testing in 2026 you know dms are open possibilities are endless mcdonald's Mm -hmm. krispy kreme if you're listening hit us up (laughs) we'll 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 talk out numbers we'll figure it out we'll help help us help you we got you yeah help us help you uh all right with that being said we're gonna slide on in to the second half of the show and we're gonna do some say what Mike, I'm going to go first. Okay. Um, I told you this story, I believe, on stream last week. I don't know if you remember it. but I do. Uh, I was yeah. sober this time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll explain the story, but my say what, uh, there's nothing worse and uh, nothing sounds you more of a loser than trying to tell someone you have a podcast. <laughs> uh, now, I we love doing this podcast, and we do tell people we have podcasts, but... In the scenario I was put in, I really did feel like the typical white guy. Oh, yeah, I got a podcast. (laughs) So I was at work, and for a separate reason, we were having someone come in and do some work for their company. And uh, he was setting up some lights and some – they had some really cool, like, mini – like, they looked like squares. They were, like, microphones, and I was really intrigued. So I was like, hey, I'm just curious. Like, are those actually microphones? And he was going on about it and talking about his equipment and stuff and – I, we were having conversations back and forth, and then he was, I, you're really interested in this stuff. Like, that's that's pretty cool, and not many people are. And I had, the, it came in my head, and I'm like, all right, do I say it? <laughs> like, he kind of does this stuff for a living, so am I going to insult him if I say this? And I'm like, well, I I have a podcast. And he was like, oh, my gosh. That's, like, he was really inter- intrigued in it. But in the moment, like, there's just nothing worse than, like, trying to, like, 
throw into a conversation, oh, yeah, I have a podcast. Like if it comes up – and I guess this kind of did come up naturally. But if it comes up naturally or someone asks – like if people – like I know, they're like, hey, you still doing the podcast? How's that going? That's fine. But like trying to inorganically bring up like, oh, yeah, I have a podcast, it it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to agree with you, Matt. When it organically shows up, in many cases, it is based on a discovery because many times – one simple example that I know for a fact always happens with me is because since my cell phone number is still tied to the TikTok account of the Funny Business Podcast, mm -hmm. uh, TikTok, Funny Business Pod, anybody who adds me as a contact and they're on TikTok shows up as a suggested account to follow, and it's the Funny Business Podcast. That's how our downstairs neighbor Justin found out <laughs> and the same night that Matt was over for a housewarming party, and it was almost like we're signing autographs. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of delivery, I mean, if we have to critique, like, in terms of delivery, like, you could say that, oh, like, I have a Rode Pod mic, and if I'm, if I'm guessing based on the equipment... It's probably the same brand. It's black. They were black. Yep, I, I knew exactly what they were. Yeah. Um, you know, I think from that aspect, like you maybe could have translated it to like, oh yeah, like I have the Pod Mic, which is the same brand as Rode, and I do it because I have a podcast. Like, I think I coming straight in for hey, I have a podcast. I think that's where the the bro comes in. Yes. And I did kind of bring up like the fact that like I have a microphone and it looked like it's the same brand and it, it was kind of similar to that. It's just yeah. still awkward. He also did shout out um to him. He followed it. Yep. All the pod. Um and I got his card. So that was a nice too. Nice. So we can always talk talk business if we need it. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's just uh yeah, like I said, it's just like the typical white guy. You got a podcast. Like it's mm -hmm. just uh, it, the, it there's the right demographic to bring that up. Luckily, he was one of them. It worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. You live and you learn, and yeah, you do. Yeah. That's another follow. So appreciate whoever. I know you didn't mention the name, but appreciate whoever followed us. <laughs> no free advertising. No free, yeah, no free ads. Uh, so Matt. Yes. I uh, somehow rejuvenated my college self this past weekend. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. How so? Mm. So we were having a few drinks. Mm -hmm. And by few, I mean like two. Okay. And Trent's birthday was this past weekend. So happy birthday to the HR department. Shout out, Trent. Uh. So he got home late and, you know, we were kind of like sitting around, you know, we, we were obviously drinking and, you know, Trent's like, oh, like, what can we do? And well, I said, can you, no, no, never mind, never mind. go ahead. I said, I know Trent. I said, let's get you started in, in learning how to play water pong because, you know, Trent's not of age yet. So correct. Yes. We got out the table. We got out the cups. And we we're playing beer pong or water pong. Let me be appropriate, being of age and say beer pong. Um, we we're playing beer pong, I think, until two o'clock in the morning. Nice. Um, I was on fire. I I don't I don't know if it was the music that was happening or just like I haven't played beer pong in a while, or there was just something about it that like. I was just, I just kept winning. That's why I stayed up until 2 a.m. because I just kept winning. Uh, Jenna was my partner at one point. We won. Dad was my partner at one point. We won. Mom was my partner at one point. We won. Uh, Trent kept losing, which, you know, rookie mistake. Well, uh, you got to teach him young. I got to teach him young. Yeah. He, uh, Got a chance to meet his his girlfriend this past weekend too. So mm. she was even practicing, and we we're like, "All right, let's switch sides." Trent's girlfriend and I went around. <laughs> so did we you just play kept any shitting game on with Trent. Trent? Yeah. Did you play any game with Trent as your? No, partner? I did not play with him. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Listen, he needs to earn his right to win at the beer pong table. You taught yeah. him well. 
I like could have sworn like I felt like I was back in the day, like holding on the WWE championship that we used to pass around whoever was winning on at the table. But oh, it was so epic. Like I like was miserable that weekend because I only got like a few hours of sleep. But as any other good party, if it's a good party, you tend to go to sleep late and then you wake up. Uh, terrible hango- uh, hangover in terms mm. of like a headache. Mm. Uh, I don't think I was like functioning until like one o'clock and I think I woke up at like 11. So wow. <laughs> it was, yeah. Oh, that's the latest I've ever slept, I think, since New Year's Day or no, I think I was even up earlier than that. But mm. what a. What a night to to put him in his place. <laughs> yeah, what kind of music was playing? You said you had music in background. Oh, I mean, was it like <laughs> typical weed played in college, or you had like you had some of those in rotation? So I think it was Party Spring 2018. That was the playlist name. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, a good one. It's a good one. At, that is a good one. Um, but then like just some newer ones that were being circulated. But oh man, I I just I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop missing. Like I was also teaching my mom how to play too, which was nice. Nice. That's good. Playing beer pong, teaching beer pong is like a nice thing to do, I guess. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll get into the to my hangover a little bit later in the show. <laughs> um, mine. Yeah, we'll we'll get into it. But uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you got to to have a good bonding moment with Trent. It's very exciting. Um, and I look forward to beating him myself at a later date. Mm-hmm. Call him a shot. <laughs> um, all right, my second one. Uh, so Easter was this past weekend, and uh, Mike, I don't know if you guys do this. Did you guys ever get like a Easter basket blessed, like of like food? You were talking about this last week. I well, last week, okay. Yeah. Um. So I did. Uh, for the first time, just myself and and April as well. Uh, living in the apartment. Uh, we got one do you unconventional what? <laughs> do you are you two live in an apartment? Yeah, breaking news: We do live together. In an apartment, <laughs> yes. Um. I put something a little unconventional in my Easter basket to get blessed, uh, but that's just because this food is so good, and it's pasta salad. Pasta salad Ooh. is so underrated, like every form of pasta salad. So we just had like a penne mozzarella olive oil pasta salad, but just All a right. generic pasta salad. My mom does this one where it's like whatever noodle you want. And it's called like cheeky monkey sauce. That's he gets like someplace up north. That's like spicy with like pepperoni. And she actually puts peas in hers. I eat the peas. I know that's <laughs> shocking. I know. Whoa. Um, I know. Getting crazy. Uh, but pasta salads is so damn good. I'm always on the fence. It's either like if it's on my plate, I'll eat it. But if like if I could, if it's buffet style and I could pick it up, I, you know. What don't you like about it? I think it's just wet. <laughs> Yeah, that's the best part of it. I I, I know, but noodle. like the wet noodle. It's I wet don't know. Noodle sliding down your throat. Oh, nice, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of food. Oh, nice. What a what a good segue. So, I'm surprised I have not had this food more. Um, and by that I mean I'm not looking. I'm not seeking out for it more. Uh, Matt, I think if I go back for my entire life and like think through it, I think I've had a pierogi for the first time this past weekend. What? I had a pierogi for the first time this past weekend. I have a question for you. Yeah. This is really unfortunate that I I can't (laughs) say some things. Are Uh you from the state of Pennsylvania? I am, Matt. Thank you very and much. You just had a pierogi for the first time this past weekend? Yeah, and? That's that's sinful. Okay. You, you, need, to, you, you need to go to confession this week. Oh, okay. Yes. I, that's, how is that possible? I Again, something like pasta salad, like something that I'm not like, it's not usually around the buffet table or it's like, I don't get it on the side of my burger. Like, never, never has been. And I know that's like weird to say because, like, that's yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. Pennsylvania, like Mrs. T's pierogies, like popular, popular frozen pierogi to try, like founded yeah. in Pennsylvania. Yeah, they're, they're trash, but. Um, it was a chicken wing hoagie. I mean, pierogi, hoagie, chicken wing hoagie. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't even a, a regular pierogi. No. No, it was it was a chicken wing pierogi that I tried. 
it's, I've never heard of a chicken wing pierogi. Where did you have said chicken wing pierogi? I uh, my grandmother brought uh a set up um because I guess she like ordered pierogies and then didn't get the right one. So she was complimented with a, a hot wing pierogi and I'm going to be honest, Matt, I'll give my honest review. Mm -hmm. Too much dough for me. Oh, that's the best part. And that, that's what everybody says. Yeah, apparently. The dough is, yeah. If it's cooked right. So next question was the inside just chicken, cheese and hot sauce. It was was there like potato filling in the inside. I did not see any potato filling visible. Oh, okay. Then, then that's, Oh, throw oh, that that's not out. a real pierogi. That's not a real pierogi. No, that's not a true pierogi. <laughs> I literally have three dozen pierogies frozen in my fridge right now. My mom gets five dozen pierogies a month from the church that I go to. I was just gonna say, did like she win like a contest or no, something? No. So the church that I actually go to um, is like famous for their pierogies. Okay. And it's a very exclusive list of like oh. who gets pierogies. And Your mom's on that exclusive my list. My mom was able so my dad's like great uncle and aunt were on the list. And somehow my mom like maneuvered her way into them when they were no longer with us. She slithered her way in. Uh, yeah, listen, my mom knows the art of the deal. It's fine. <laughs> um Oh, they're so good. Oh I the next time we get together <laughs> Pierogies. I will be making your pierogi. I was I was gonna say a really bad joke talking about how your mom gets on a list, and I was like, "Well, your mom's on my list," but like Shut I know up. your mom so well, and I <laughs> I actually like her, so I wasn't gonna say that. I, I actually like her. It's great. <laughs> oh man, pierogies are so good. Mrs. T's though a trash. Don't if you actually want to try a true pierogi, please don't try Mrs. T's first mm. because they are they're not. I won't say they're not good. But when you have a true traditional pierogi, it, yeah. it's mind blowing. I had a I had a former individual that has shared that she used a comparison that she would rather choke on a Mrs. T's pierogi than try a person's certain food. Interesting. Yeah. What was the? No, you don't have to say whose food, but what was the type of food? I can't. I can't. Anything more, Damn I get killed. Oh, that sucks. Um, all right. So next time we get together, we got to make a pierogi. <laughs> it's good to know. Um, okay. Well, that was Say What? And we will wrap up the show with some down in the dumps. Mike, I'll go first. Let me pull up my list. I actually had a list, and then I had something this morning that happened. That You know oh. what? I'll, just, I'll start with that one first. Okay. Got up, ready for work this morning. Got my coffee cup. Out of the cabinet, I put the cake up in the Keurig. I closed the Keurig cup. I hit press, walk away, start to put my rest of the stuff in my backpack. I hear a noise. I'm like, huh, that noise sounds weird. What's the Keurig up to? Didn't put my coffee cup underneath. Oh. Yep. Uh, so luckily I realized it like halfway through, so I only had like half a cup of coffee. Um, so that was – the cleanup wasn't terrible, uh, and luckily – I had a lunch with someone today uh, for work purposes. That was Who was a, it? That was at a coffee shop. So that was convenient timing. Nice. Um, yeah. Second one, um, my body is rejecting alcohol. Really, Matthew? Uh, yes, it is. So mm. uh, as you all may remember, gave up. I did dry January and gave up alcohol for Lent. So on Saturday, I was finally able to drink. Saturday, I only had like two or three beers because I had to drive. And I was not – Drunk, was not hung over the next morning at all. However, I it's probably because I just wasn't used to drinking a lot. My stomach was not – it just didn't sit well. Like while I was mm. drinking it, it didn't sit well. Later at night, it didn't sit well. The next morning, like stomach just fell off. It was very, very weird. And then Sunday came around and I consumed it way too much. Um, was feeling good. Was hung over the next morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all day my stomach was just bad and I'm not saying I'm done drinking cause I'm not. However, <laughs> I really, I, I think I've come to the conclusion I'm going to have like a two drink limit. Uh, a week? No, or any, per outing? any, any per outing two drink limit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, I was feeling really good without drinking in, in January, February and getting into shape and, uh, 
yeah, I just don't. The hangovers just suck too. Like I just, yeah. I'm tired of being hungover. I technically promised myself that kind of a similar to your your way, not to. Uh, I don't want to say binge drink, but that's the proper terminology. It but is. um, I'm waiting about like almost a month. Um, because we have a wedding coming up that we're going to celebrate. So, mm-hmm. uh, not Jenna, not ours, but uh, Congratulations. Jenna's sister. So, um, yeah. So that's that. And finally, uh, this is really the biggest one. This was very funny. At work, I was talking with a coworker and uh, needed my phone number for something. So, I pulled it up on her phone, and then uh, I walked away to my desk and came back to ask her another question. And uh, she's like, "Hey, by the way." Um, Mike, you know how on your phone you can set like a contact photo for people? Yes. What I didn't know is now some of the new Apple updates, like it, it if you go shares calls, it. it shares like your profile. Mike, do you know what my uh, contact photo is? So I have a few guesses. Yeah. It's not <laughs> terrible. I don't know if you're going to guess it, but if you would like to throw some guesses out. My me. guess, I have – so I have uh, – your contact photo is you as Tommy Pickles. No, thank God it's not okay. that one. That my, would have been rough. My second guess is you in the hot dog costume. No. Okay. No. My third guess is you in the dress for Relay for Life. Thank God that's not that one either. <laughs> Man, I'm really just outing myself. I know the guesses. It is me at River Grill, and I am posing with none other than a Buddy the Elf inflatable, and yes. I am I am holding the peace sign. <laughs> I remember that photo. Yeah. So she's like, this popped up on my phone and shows me, I'm like, Oh my god. <laughs> um Yeah, that was really embarrassing. Yeah. I you know the ones I mentioned, it could have been that. Could have been way worse. Way worse. The Tommy Pickles one would have been tough. <laughs> Especially because I'm just like chugging a gallon of milk. Yeah. Yeah. Why why is that man wearing a diaper? <laughs> why is that man a hot dog? Why is, why is that man dressed <laughs> like a wiener? Uh that's all I got. So the only one I have, I'm, you know, for you. I think well, I'm not, I'm down in the dumps, but like it, it is a, we're at the low, but like we're slowly building back up. Mm-hmm. So as I've mentioned, I, I started a new job um, with some of that new job comes with a couple new benefits. Uh, one being they actually have a water cooler in the building that I work at. Nice. So. Matt, you've seen my my green water bottle, correct? I believe so, John. Yeah, like, the thing's a honker, right? Like, it's, yeah. I forget how many ounces. I think it's 36 or 42. I'm not sure. It's a decent size. 36 ounces. I used to have like six of them at my first job. And then when I went to the next job, there wasn't a water cooler. There was only a water fountain. And I, I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan yeah, of that. I agree. Yeah. I get you. And so I only drank one of those bottles a day. And now that I have the water cooler back, I'm starting to try to drink more water. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's good. But I but I think it also comes with the crutch that <laughs> I'm just so busy during the day, I just forget. Like there oh. are times like I will I like I, I bring in kind of another thing. I bring in cold brew first, then water, and I sometimes don't even clean my cold brew cup until like two o'clock in the afternoon because that's how busy it is. <laughs> so, um, so just trying to get in the habit a little bit more of like drinking more water because obviously water is good. Um, I know like there's apps out there that like remind you to drink water, but mm-hmm. I I have also um, just been in this mode where like it's just a different work style Mm -hmm. um i guess in addition to down in the dumps of how sad how much i used my phone at my last job and not to procrastinate but to actually use it Mm -hmm. matt i used to come home i i've had to charge my phone matt i'm at well 
including the time because I put in my car, Apple CarPlay on right. my commute home. Yeah. I'm back to 91% on this phone. Wow. And I've not used, like, I don't use my phone as much as I used to, but. Oh, well, yeah, it's a different setting. It's a different yeah. setting, different job, but mm-hmm. it, it just is so sad how much I did use it. Yeah. Um, so just, like, those different work adjustments, I can't say they're, like, horrible, but Mm-mm. they are, like, it's an adjustment. So it, it is a down in the dumps, but we can only go up. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to offer you a special piece of advice. Um, as someone that also kind of started new jobs and different people coming and going. Um, different strokes for different told, folks. Yes. What I was told recently, don't be afraid to like – obviously, we have calendars. Put in your calendar. Take five minutes to get water. Like Drink legit. Water. Yes. Yeah. But the, legit, if it's like, you know, 1135 – Stand up and go get water. Like, put mm-hmm. that in there so it makes you stand up, Take even if it's two minutes. Yeah. But it's that break, stand up, get your legs some energy, get it moving, get the water, sit back, you get right back into it. But don't be afraid to just, like, put it in your calendar. Do you do that for yourself? Uh, I'm starting to, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, I was just yeah. curious. I, I, they, they say, in general, it's good to, whether you get, even if your company, whatever, offers, like, a 15-minute break, like, Put that in your calendar because, yeah. you know, nowadays you build your calendar to spell out your whole day and then you spell out your whole day without stepping away from your desk. Put it in for three minutes, five minutes. Yeah. Take a break. Go Deep work, too. Walk. Yeah, yeah. And it's really going to help your work better of really setting your mind, taking a break, giving your eyes something different to look at. Yeah, I know. I might have to resort back going back to uh, blocking out time for, like, emails and whatnot. Like I always, always, always struggle with when to check emails because mm-hmm. I always have my tab open all day long, and then I get a new email and I switch, and then mm-hmm. I've well, never known the best way. I have to deal with two inboxes now, and two inboxes are used frequently, so that's tough. Yeah, yeah and even so, some idea. of those things are not directly associated with me, but because it falls in my department, I have to respond to it. So right, right, yeah, all good things, all good You'll, things. This, yeah. this is and you're you're new into it you'll find that balance you know you'll get there that's all i got that's good i feel like yeah I mean, even i had 3 but i feel like that was good weeks for us yeah like my every week's a good week every week's a good week you know why cuz we get to sit down at the end of the day take some time out of our busy schedules and deliver you the good coworkers of the funny business podcast another episode it's a great time for us to connect uh yeah it's just uh it's a great time and we hope you all are still enjoying this journey like we are um yeah it's a great time yeah and if you're looking for more content you can find all that good stuff at beacons.ai slash funny business pod mr matthew yay ish what is your advice for the coworkers, the good people of the funny business world oh man um i guess this kind of goes along with scheduling some breaks but um you know, make sure uh, you all out there, uh, and us included, um, make sure you have a, a healthy – and everyone's work-life balance is going to look different, but have a healthy work-life balance. You know, um, work is very important, and there's going to be times where you have to put a lot of time and energy into work. But make sure when you're away from work or this year, you're getting some time to do things, other things that you enjoy, spend time with family or friends, whatever they may, that may look like. Um, make sure it's, it's not just work, 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 you know, with, when you have time away from it, uh, it's going to improve your work. If you're taking the time to relax and focus on some of the things, whatever that may be, uh, if that's reading a book, if that's playing video games, if that's going for a hike, uh, whatever that may look like, uh, just try to, and it can be tough, challenging, uh, but it's, uh, it's important for your mental health. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, even like Matt said, blocking out time. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't want meetings at eight o'clock in the morning, book an hour. That way, nobody ever books time for you. And if somebody says, Why do you have that in your calendar? You could say, I'm Trying to have boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. If you, if you like taking the first half an hour of your day checking emails, put it in there. You know? Yep. Yeah. Is all good in the hood. 
Thank you all so much for tuning in. And until the next time, we'll see you all in the next episode. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>